A frequent subject of the videos on my channel have to do with foreign coins, and today we're going to talk about some coins that appear in this British magazine from 1977. Now, my parents made a trip to uh, Britain in 1977, and they happened to pick up the Sunday Telegraph. It has this little magazine-type insert, which they kept, and I, I suppose this reminds me a lot of the uh, the parade magazine that appears in uh, U.S. Sunday newspapers. They happen to go the week of Wimbledon, which is why we see it on the cover here. But 1977, if uh, you follow the monarchy, that was the Silver Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. That is the 25th year that she was in office. And I'm going to flip in, in here and uh, show you a couple of ads uh, focusing on coins that uh, appeared in this magazine. We're going to start with this ad right here, having to do with the uh, Silver Jubilee. These coins will not have silver in them, but it is uh, coins based on the Silver Jubilee. And if you think color-plated coins are a new phenomenon, will this advertisement will tell you that it is not. Now, in uh, Britain, the crowns used to be a significant um, coin uh, for silver, but since about the 1950s, it's always been commemorative issues. And here we have a coin, uh, two or three different types of coins that were crowns during uh, Queen Elizabeth's reign. We have one, I believe the one in the middle represents the uh, the Silver Jubilee. The one on, I mean the one in the center is the Jubilee. The one on the left is, or it even tells us here for the middle, the Silver cr Jubilee crown piece. Only the second such coin to be struck by the royal mint this century to celebrate the silver jubilee of a sovereign's reign, destined to be a classic. Now, I don't know if you're like me and always pass over the colored uh, United States coins where they had one from every state or one from, every, uh, from the national parks. If you like them, hey, that's great, but just know that they're not going to have any collector's premium, so... Hopefully you won't pay a lot for them, but uh, I know there's some people that are looking for uh, gullible people to purchase those at, at some exorbitant price. There's really nothing special about them. And the crown is essentially a 25 pence piece. And so they don't, didn't, you, at least after they uh, redesigned the, uh, the currency in 1972. So for 50 years, they um, haven't been making many of these. So the one on the left it tells me here that the Elizabeth and Philip crown piece, specially minted in 1972 to commemorate the silver wedding of Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, even as a plain coin, this uh, particular, particular crown has already acquired a rarity value. Probably not true. I was able to pick one up when I started coin collecting in 2000, and so it wasn't really that hard to find. Uh, the one on the right, I actually don't have, but I'm not looking to buy one because uh, I'm uh, my mother-in-law has one, and I'll just get hers if, uh, someday, I suppose. But uh, the much sought-after coronation crown piece uh, struck in 1953 in honor of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's coronation in Westminster Abbey. The beautiful coin now has a considerable rarity value in its own right. I, I suppose that one's a little bit more rare since I do not have it, but... Not only have they colorized these coins, but they've turned them into necklace, uh, necklaces. And so, I like the, the little inset here. Judge for yourself. Here's Here we show the Jubilee crown in plain form. And so, uh, there you go. It was, uh, you could get the, uh, the complete set for 72 pounds. Or just the uh, Jubilee crown for... 2250. So there you go, colorized crowns. Now, this next one has more of a uh, numismatic value to it, uh, uh, interest, I would say. So here is an insurance company, and they are uh, honoring that they have been around for so long that they've, they've, uh, their company's been around during 12 different monarchs, and they have them in reverse chronological order. Now, uh, we can't turn these around and see the uh, the value of these coins. It's going to be the heads side on each of these. But 
uh, going backwards, this would be um, three pence, six pence, shilling, one of those. So can't can't quite tell what the coins are, but it is neat to see some of the older coins on here in a, um, a high quality. So we've got Queen Elizabeth II, George the Sixth, Edward the Eighth. The next row we've got George the Fifth, Edward the Seventh, and Queen Victoria. So here we're dealing with a coin of about 1900 or so that is the uh, the later uh, Queen Victoria look. We've got uh, William the Fourth, George the Fourth, George the Third. This one has a date of 1817, and he was the monarch for quite a while. Because uh, if you think of when America, United States, we, we were trying to break apart from Britain, we were fighting George the Third at the time. So before that, we had George the Second, George the First, and then finally Queen Anne. So there you go, twelve different uh, monarchs, uh, all pictured in one advertisement to just uh, show how long they've been in business. So that's everything having to do with coins in this magazine. Now I'm going to show off just uh, quickly some other ads that caught my interest from a foreign magazine from the mid-70s. Here you've got a book club, uh, three for a pound. This reminds me of uh, kind of like the Columbia House um, CD model uh, from the, uh, the 80s and 90s. So, what would you say was the cheapest car to run on four wheels? Well, according to this ad, it is the Austin Allegro. And I've, I've heard of Austins, can't say that I've actually seen one in the States, although I have seen these as um, matchbox cars. Here is the poof bed that you could uh, pay for the same price as a footstool. And it was only 34 and a half pounds. So I guess it's a uh, an old uh, small rollaway of some kind. Is there anything you can't buy with a Diners Club card? <laughs> These days, that's probably too. There are probably lots of things you can't buy with a uh, Diners Club card. But uh, I guess you could purchase uh, uh, an elephant in India. So, for another European car, we have the Volkswagen uh, Scirocco. See, apparently we got it because Charles says two-star is much better for the ecology or something like that. So, uh, uh, again, I'm not sure how many of these I've seen in America, but I have seen these as Hot Wheels. Is uh, Holland really known for their cigars? I mean, uh, maybe they can't get Cuban cigars there, but... Uh, uh, I can't say I'm familiar with uh, really any kind of cigars. If you thought Fabergé was only eggs, like that one right here, apparently the uh, Fabergé uh, craftsman people uh, did a lot more than just the eggs. One more car ad. We've got the Fiat Mirafiori. And I can honestly say that I've never heard of a Mirafiori. See, I think that's a better picture, but it's smaller, and uh, that is the larger picture, or you can only see it from uh, the back, and uh, I guess they're celebrating uh, Italian, or at least uh, Florentine's uh, taste in cars. And on the back cover, we've got a uh, cigarette ad featuring the Concorde. I guess that's the Concorde. It, uh, at least it says British Airways up there, so... All right. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.